and at what cost to tenants in other communities who would be without those officers? So maybe if I could just take a high level um, response back to your question. Let me reiterate again that safety and security is critically important. Um, I'm copied on all fan outs, so I'm, I'm fully aware of the incidents related to gangs and weapons and uh, drug related incidents in our buildings and I'm very much committed in working with our team and outside party stakeholders in terms of doing anything that we can to reduce the incidence of, of violent crime in our communities. It's a huge concern. I wanted to comment on your question about reporting. So uh, I will take responsibility in terms of the nature of the reporting because when I look at what material we provide to you or we provide to um, our tenants and other stakeholders, I want to make sure there's value added. I want to make sure that we're focusing on those things that we need to focus on to be able to take action and drive down the incidence of crime in our communities. I have to say that, you know, a, a very extensive table that indicates how many calls we get about a particular item, that doesn't actually give the outcome or it doesn't actually give an indication as to whether or not there was an issue in the building. So what we're trying to do is to recast the reports to really focus on what it is that we're doing with respect to making our community safer. The, um, the pilot that you referred to, we had discussions with uh, the local councillor and we've also been out with buildings and engaged with the buildings because that's a building of concern in terms of prevalence of incidents and it's a pilot project that we're developing so the questions that you're asking Catherine, uh, we're just giving you a, a heads up basically that we're looking at developing a pilot that we might be able to extend for uh, the rest of our portfolio but we need to test it out and we're at the stages of basically developing what it's going to look like and what's going to do. In terms of having our own special constables versus security guards, there is a big difference. There's a big difference with respect to commitment to the organization, commitment to our tenants. There's a big difference in terms of authorities because our special constables go through a very rigorous uh, background check selection process, training process, and they have powers that a security guard doesn't have. And we ensure that we're also training them to make sure that um, they have a tenant focus. Um, but it's, it's a pilot that we're going to be reporting back to you on uh, because ultimately, from my point of view, and I, I've said this to Kevin as well, is that as we're seeking to find organizational efficiencies to the extent that I can, I want to make sure that we're directing more resources to our, our CSU unit uh, because when you look at even the number of special constables we have currently and the fact that we have 2,100 buildings and we're in 144 communities, whatever the right number is, I want to make sure that we're improving our coverage and our response times. So what we're looking to uh, continue to report back to you with is an overarching strategy in terms of how we can make our community safer and protect our tenants. So does William not need to answer me now or no, how does that work? Sorry? Well, I think that Kathy, Kathy did she not answer some of your, your questions? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I just called William up here. I thought he might answer. Yeah. Okay. Is so there anything you want to add to I just don't want to... I can just address for information purposes on the resource side. Right. Is that... Yes, there's, there's always a careful consideration of how a special constable is used as a peace officer versus a security guard. Okay. But it's when you speak to efficiency and concern about making sure we're in the community. I'm sorry, everyone. It's uh, Michael Ford here. Uh, can't, I can't hear the staff member responding to Catherine. Bill, why don't okay. you sit here? That's Bill. my volume now. Can you hear now? Yeah, that's much better. Thank okay. You. I just, maybe I was standing too far from the mic. So, just to be aware that a security guard, as Kathy mentioned, has uh, less authorities than a peace officer being a special constable. And the difference is, is that when a security guard is engaged on premises, not only do they have lesser authorities, but when they do act on authorities on what's typically deemed a fine committing or authorities designated under the Trespass Property Act, when we move forward with that kind of situation, we still require a special constable to attend. If a person is to be charged on the Trespass Property Act or was arrested by a security guard, the special constable still has to attend to process that person, and the special constable has the authority to release that person, not the security guard. Similarly, when we have criminal offenses, there are criminal offenses that if a security guard arrests, they're immediately required to promptly turn over that person to a peace officer, which means the community safety unit officer again attends, takes mm -hmm. custody of that person, and a decision is made whether to release on site, or transport to Toronto Police Service Division. And the difference is, is that we are multiplying the number of hours that we tie up our resources for patrol. 
when we do get the process. Legislation requires that we do so, so we're looking at a way of leveraging our resources that much better. Great, and, and so I just uh, thank you for that. So um, what, what I think the committee needs is what it, what is the tentative start date and end date for the pilot, at what cost, impact to other communities, and report back on the, the, the number of arrests and, and those kinds of things. The problem is this is very much like uh, Tavis that would go into a community, set up stakes, solve the problems, move out, and guess what? The minute they moved out, the problems moved back in. So we've got to yeah. look to so, a yeah. long-term sustainable solution. Yeah, let's okay. let's come back with the pilot. Like I think it's a really good point. I think this is an area. This is a building that or a complex that we actually okay. need to understand. And let's bring it back. But I just want to wrap up by saying we need to be very careful. I see that language about staffing resources, staffing challenges. We have the highest number of security staff this organization has ever had. Under a different model, site uh, the security staff is at every one of our sites every day of their shifts. So things are changing. So if we're getting to the point where we need to have police 24-7 on our properties, it's time to say to Toronto Police Services, you know what? This isn't something we as a social housing landlord can manage or afford. So let's, Thank let's you. look at that. Uh, Councillor DiGiorgio, wanted to say something? Yeah, just uh, a quick question with respect to the apparent powers that um, the security guard versus a uh, police constable. So if I understand correctly, you're basically saying that a security guard requires um, a constable to be on site to exercise some power. Of arrest. Yeah. Yes. Now, does the security guard have the power to detain someone until a police officer arrives? Yes, it's dependent upon the circumstance and different legislation. But the simple way of putting it is a security guard has authority as any citizen, basically they have citizen power of arrest. Which means right, they, have they have to witness a crime to respond to it. it. Has to be relevant to the property they're representing. Trespass to Property Act. They have to be there and follow the rules as any property owner would have to follow. A special constable doesn't have to find committing. A special constable carries the powers of a police officer pertinent to our properties, on our relation to, and that enables them to carry out investigations, take statements from persons, come to a decision and even in the aftermath, make an arrest or leave charges. Okay, so you're confident that we have adequate power by having security guards on site? Well, right. you're you, have, you have adequate power to have a security guard protect as a police officer on site might be able to protect? A uh, security guard does not have the same threshold of powers or authority. Right. No, I constable. understand that. So there's three levels. So right now they have a, they have a, a, a third party security guard they're actually going to change that and have the special constables who have actually a higher level of that's, that's right that, i guess i was referring to the special constable okay okay because yeah. you're using security guard there. just very briefly what, what we're looking at is again to make sure that we're using the resources we have available in the most efficient and effective way so uh, special constables uh perform a very important uh function and the other benefit by the way is having been out there for the drive-alongs it's also important because as Catherine said this is something we can't solve on our own we need police and the relationship between our special constables and the uh, the police officers who are out there is very strong and they collaborate effectively security guards um, we will have a need for them on an ongoing basis but not to try to do the functions that our special constables need to do because we're doubling up then and it's not efficient use of resources right. where security guards do provide a valuable service and where we need them is for example if we need a fire watch in a building or for whatever reason we're doing mag lock updates while we're doing the update the door might not lock so we need to provide security and in that case is it would be not a good use of our, our trained special constables to provide that sort of coverage but a security guard posted in the building is the right way to do it to make sure we're protecting our tenants so police our team uh, the security services that that we bring on board we need to look at what the best overall model is to provide the necessary services to our tenants so just very last question then how many people do we have this year we're going up to what 112 it was in there sorry it's in the report how many We'll be at 114 by the end of the year, special constables, that's the patrol constables, not including the 14 supervisors who are also sworn. So how many buildings would one special constable be basically responsible for? 
If I may, we will bring back a report strategically. I think the key thing, the point that I would like to leave you with is that, yes, we might have more than we, actually, we don't have more than we had ever before because I think I previously think it was up to it. three, we were almost 200 but, uh, staff. But the important thing to remember is that we have 2,100 buildings. Our special constables are out there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So when you look at coverage, at any given point in time, especially in those times when we have the maximum number of incidents, it's a very low level of coverage. So we need to be strategic about how we use our resources. And again, my commitment is that to the extent possible, if, if we are able to achieve some operational efficiencies and things that aren't going to direct tenant benefit already, then I'd like to beef up our, our response and our protection of our tenants. Great. So we, let's bring this back to another uh, meeting with a little Can bit more I just more have detail? a 30 second because I'm not coming to another meeting. Well, at least not at this table. Um, so, so can you just tell me if a CSU officer arrests someone on site, who transports them to the police? If transport is required. Yes. Just remember that the key thing to remember about criminal law is always that if the arrest, if a release is possible, your release must happen as soon as possible. So what happens upon an arrest is the officer in charge of the local Toronto Police Service division is spoken with, consulted, the decision's made, and then it's either release or transport. If it's transport, we do the transport, and we work with the detectives to finalize the paperwork for charge. If it's release, we release that scene and submit the paperwork to the Toronto Police Service in the courts. Okay, so we may end up transporting them. We can arrest them and detain them on site, contact TPS, and they'll advise us if they're sending a car or we need to deliver them. Is that right? Yes, they don't. Okay. The only okay. reason they would typically send a car if we could not facilitate because of level of.